Welcome into Orange and Blue today, presented by Sean Ponda, Cecil Lammy, Andrew Mason, going through our What If series. And what if Dan Reeves had successively traded John Elway to Washington back in the early 90s? Yeah, this is one. First of all, you think about why would Dan Reeves trade John Elway potentially? You shudder to think. You shudder to think that. But there were conversations and, uh, I'm actually reading here the uh, the Orlando Sentinel from January 24th, 1992. This is two days before Super Bowl 26. Washington and Joe Gibbs were in Super Bowl 26. And um, the headline says, Skins discuss trade for Elway. Joe Gibbs confirmed Thursday he was engaged by Denver coach Dan Reeves last summer, which would have been the summer of 1991, coming off of that. 5 and 11 1990 season. They was engaged by Denver coach Dan Reeves and talks of a potential blockbuster trade for Broncos quarterback John Elway. However, Gibbs, whose team will meet the Buffalo Bills in Sunday Super Bowl 26, characterized the talks which took place, place near the start of preseason camp as informal and short lived. Okay. So informal and short lived, but still were there. Yeah, they were there. And uh, one of the, and we've seen bits and pieces come out over the years. Of course, Washington had Mark Rippon at quarterback, so almost certainly Mark Rippon would have been coming to the Broncos. Right. Um, the name Jim Lachey, uh, the star left tackle for Washington at the time, was also very much in conversations. And, of course, sort of the persistent need for the Broncos in those days was a left tackle until Gary Zimmerman came in in 1993. Right. So, Think so. about it. Elway and Mark Schlereth would have been able to be teammates before they were teammates with the Broncos. Would Stink have ever come to Denver then? Probably not. Yeah. Think about that. Now I'm getting chills talking about that. that yeah. I mean, we're talking about changing both franchises. We're talking about changing the radio station. Yeah. And how everyone <laughs> if, loves if, Yeah, if Stink never becomes a Bronco, he's probably never at the fan. I never, never eat his green Denver chili. Fan. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't learn about green chili. Maybe there's no stinking <laughs> good green chili because he never comes to Denver to live. Wow. And never falls in love with the local cuisine here. Well, and you talk about 92, correct me if I'm wrong, but Tommy Maddox was drafted when? 92. 92. So that would have been one year after these conversations. Yes. Happened. So this interview was done before the Super Bowl. Uh -huh. We all know how that went against Buffalo. Sorry, Bills fans. And then in 92, here comes a sophomore Tommy Maddox, three years removed, I believe, because of redshirt year. Mm -hmm. A sophomore Tommy Maddox comes to the Denver Broncos and then – I guess controversy ensues, but we all know at that time, Dan Reeves and John Elway, the relationship was fractured. Let's say that. Uh, it, very much so. Um, but the interesting thing to think about for a moment is this. If Mark Rippon comes to Denver in the trade, let's, let's actually live in a universe where Mark Rippon comes to Denver as part of the trade and still has his career year in 1990. So maybe 1991 doesn't look a lot different, but if Dan Reeves likes Mark Rippon, is he picking Tommy Maddox in the first round of the 1992 draft? No, and then Tommy Maddox won't follow him everywhere he goes, basically, yeah. for the rest of his coaching career. Right. And then if they win with Mark Rippon, and again, please correct me if I'm wrong, we're around the Bobby Humphrey days, right? If I'm going back to 91. 91 like, was the Gaston Green year. Gaston Green. Very good. Because Bobby Humphrey Rams. was in a contract dispute. Yes. Yeah. And uh, didn't the Broncos eventually get uh, Sammy Smith as part of the deal? I believe so. Florida State product. <laughs> Boy, there was a guy that I thought was going to be terrific as a pro and did not pan out. That was Sammy Smith. Yeah, Sammy Smith. Yeah. And well, S A M M I E. Yes, we all yeah. know how that worked out. Not as good as Sammy Winder, who we love, but that's true. Think about how they would win, right? If they had Lachey. If they had Rippon, it's Dan Reeves' ball, so you're going to run the ball. Mm -hmm. um, but you think of the success that they would have, and I know it was a little bit later when Dan Reeves was fired by the Denver Broncos and Wade Phillips was hired as their head coach. That was 93-94 with Wade. Again, mm -hmm. please correct me if I'm wrong. So you had a couple of seasons, but we could be we could be talking about a Dan Reeves era, not even Mike Shanahan, right? So we talk about the Shanahan era and the Shanahan offense and the Shanahan way. That might not have existed had Dan Reeves had success with Mark Rippon, who played his best ball 
in the early 90s. Yeah, 1991 had a career season. Cecil and I were actually talking about this just before the show, that there are some, I think, was it, NF, was it NFL Network, you said? NFL Network, I believe, Who yeah. believe that the Washington team in 1991 is the best that there's ever been. I wouldn't say the best, but I do think it's a top five, maybe at worst top ten team as a single-year team. Yes. They lose two games in the regular season. One, they lose by three to Dallas, and there's a Hail Mary involved at the end of the first half for the Cowboys that made that win possible. And the other was, I believe, a two-point loss to Philadelphia in the last game of the season when there was nothing on the line. Philadelphia was missing the playoffs. They didn't have Randall Cunningham that year. Washington was locked in at the number one seed. They were playing backups and still came within an eyelash of winning at Philly in that season finale. So it was a transcendent team. Now, of course, we know that John Elway would eventually have a second act that was brilliant here in Denver. Mark Rippon didn't have that second act. Right. And the decline really began in 1992. Now, what's interesting in 1992, the Broncos and Washington had their paths cross in RFK Stadium on Monday Night Football. Not the chip beef on toast game. That was 1989. But they go back and play another Monday Night game. Washington and Denver played a lot of Monday Night games in that era. Yes, they, they did. 1980, they played on Monday Night. Um, 1989, they played on Monday Night. 1992, they played on Monday Night. Um, anyhow, so... They play a Monday night game in Washington. Washington with Mark Rippon having a good game, 16 of 26, 245 yards, a touchdown. They win 34 to 3 over the Broncos. John Elway does not have a good game. John Elway has a 31.8 passer rating that night. That's bad, right? That's bad. <laughs> and of course, John Elway got hurt later that year. So Elway misses four games, of course. And those four games, the Broncos lose and they end up going eight and eight. They missed the playoffs. Dan Reeves gets fired. Mark Rippon in 1992 for Washington played all 16 games. Like the one thing you could say about him at that time, he was kind of, he was basically built like a truck, right? And so you look at a quarterback who they say, okay, he could take a hit. Mark Rippon could take a hit. Yes. So in this alternate universe, do the Broncos go 8-8 eight eight in 1992? Because I think we're going to assume their 1991 season plays out in similar fashion if Rippon plays that well. Yes. Maybe even a little bit better. Maybe you win the AFC Championship game. Right. Which means you could go headlong into the Super Bowl against the Washington team led by... John Elway. Ha! And if you don't have conflict, you don't wow! have a story. And that would be a great Super story. Bowl 26, Denver with Mark Rippon against Washington led by John Elway. Ooh. Who wins? Uh, I'd still say Washington. I'd say, I'd say Washington, too. Yeah. That's where, honestly, I I trust Joe Gibbs in that game more than I would have trusted Dan Reeves. Mm -hmm. um, so John Elway gets the monkey off his back by winning the Super Bowl. The Broncos lose their fifth <laughs> Super Bowl, this time without John Elway. Right. Oh, my my goodness. Wow. Now we've taken this alternate universe to a really dark place where the Broncos lose their fifth Super Bowl, but do so two decades before it actually happened. Right. And without having won one. At this moment, in this alternate universe, on January 27th, 1992, the day after Super Bowl 26, the Broncos would stand alone as the Super Bowl's biggest loser. Yes. Over Minnesota and Buffalo wouldn't exist because the Broncos would have been Bronco, up there. Yeah. And I'm just going to say that the Broncos, they don't get back the following year. Buffalo makes a Super Bowl. So Buffalo ends up losing three out of four, but they don't lose four in a row. Meanwhile, the Broncos have five Super Bowl losses. Ouch. So, but in that instance, I still think they're a playoff team in 1992. But the thing is, at what point, like, how does Pat Bowen view this? Because, of course, if Dan Reeves had traded John Elway, and we know how close Pat was with John Elway. Yes. He goes to Super Bowl 26 and loses and sees John Elway on the Washington sideline celebrating. Um, 
how does Dan Reeves look in Pat Mullen's eyes? Yes, he's just gotten the Broncos to a fourth Super Bowl in a six-season span, now with a different quarterback. So that's a feather in his cap. But the quarterback that he traded is sitting there on the opposite sideline hoisting the Lombardi Trophy. Mr. Bowlen and his friendship then with Mike Shanahan, which would not exist because Dan Reeves would still be there. Like, ugh. We have changed the history of two franchises here profoundly. Mm -hmm. um, with one move. Because in Washington, does Joe Gibbs walk away after 1992? I know he was dealing with some health issues at that moment, but does he walk away if he's got John Elway there? It'd be too tempting to stay. I think he find a way maybe you you bring bring in some assistance to handle more of the load uh, you know maybe even kick yourself up to uh you know some bigger role in the organization but i think joe gibbs is still around that building well let's talk about changing destinies because yeah. in that division the nfc east the 90s are remembered as the cowboys does decade. john does john elway prevent one of those cowboys titles or m all of the cowboys titles <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say all of them because that was an, an incredibly talented team. Um, and we know with the Broncos, as good as they were with John Elway, and he would have been just marvelous with Joe Gibbs. Yes. Like uh, the revival that happened with Jim Fossil in 93 would have happened in 91 with Joe Gibbs. He would have been absolutely lights out. And imagine him throwing to those three receivers they had, Art Monk, Gary Clark, Ricky Sanders, and of course, Art Monk, Hall of Famer. Think about that. You would have given John Elway a Hall of Fame receiver to work with. Yeah. Yeah. And you would have had a ground game that would have worked. Yeah. Whoever it was at the time. What, Ricky Irvins? I'm remembering rookie cards Ricky, now. Reggie uh, Brooks okay. was a little bit later, Actually, like 93. In, yeah. In 91, they had they had drafted Ricky Irvins. They still had Ernest Biner and Gerald Ricks. I mean, capable. Just, yeah. Capable they, in that game. They were, they were more than capable. And were, Ricky Irvin was a first round pick, if memory serves. Like, so it was a highly. No, talented no. He, he was, I think, like a second or third. Second or third. Well, remember, they were still. I had a lot of rookie cards of him that did not work out. Yeah. I'm not sending my kids to college on my Ricky Irvin's rookie cards. Yeah, you, you believed, right? I did believe. Um, I mean, the, the Washington, you, if you go down the Washington rabbit hole, the, you know, when Jack Kent Cook dies, does his will look the same as it did? Does he pass the team on to his son, John Kent Cook, as everyone at the time expected? Didn't happen. In the end, uh, the team was ordered to be sold to fund a scholarship program. And John Kent Cook tried to get some investors. He couldn't line them up, got outbid by Daniel Snyder. So Ugh. basically, so in this alternate universe, does that happen? Or does the team, you know, the, the will stay as apparently it was for a long time? team stays in the family john elway plays out his career in washington joe gibbs hands the baton to you know name one of his lieutenants at some you know at some point and uh and washington marches on as a very functional and successful franchise instead of being becoming the joke that they did meanwhile the broncos become a very successful franchise but does that happen to the same degree if they make this trade because all of a sudden if Pat Bowen is if Pat Bowen is miffed with Dan Reeves, he maybe he still fires Dan Reeves after the 1992 season. Um, maybe Wade Phillips becomes the coach because we haven't taken from that defense. That defense is still really good. Right. Um, but uh, at that point, you've got Mark Rippon, who you know the, the hits that he took. He could take a hit, but he hit the wall fast and declined. So all of a sudden, you're getting into the mid 90s. You're the Broncos, and you may be looking for a new quarterback. Your collapse probably happens in 1993. Um, Washington collapsed with Rippon in 93 going 4-12. and 12. Maybe the collapse happens for the Broncos in 93 in a similar type of finish, which means you have a high draft pick in 1994. And uh, that is the year of Heath Shuler and Trent Dilfer as the top two quarterbacks. Washington took Heath Shuler, took Heath Shuler yes. and... And Gus Farrat could outplay right. him as a seventh rounder that year. So let's just, let's say the Broncos are in that universe where they decide, hey, Heath Schuler looks good in orange at University of Tennessee. Let's bring him into Denver. Heath Schuler's your Broncos quarterback. Bust! Which means you're shopping for another quarterback by the time you get to 1996, 1997. And now you're starting to get into a bad pattern here. Yes. Yeah. And it's and you really are in a dark place. Maybe Mike Shanahan doesn't come back to Denver. 
Maybe he's like, oh, he's sure that guy's going to be a bust. I don't want him as my quarterback. It's almost like a multiverse look. Yeah. Uh, my final point on this, Mason, then we'll tie a bow on it unless you have something else, is because there would be no Tommy Maddox with Dan Reeves, most likely, we wouldn't get the rotation that you saw in Dallas when Dan Reeves was there between Craig Morton, Roger Staubach, and we got to see that rotation. Here in Denver. Right here in Denver. Against John the Cowboys. Moore, Tommy Maddox. Rotating <laughs> – I think it was even plays at times, yes. including series, like they did when they didn't know if Craig Morton was going to be the guy or Roger Staubach was going to be the guy. And Tom Landry played them both. And it rarely happens in the NFL, but you saw it twice. And Dan Reeves was there for both of them. You know, the crazy thing is it almost worked in that 1992 game. Yeah. Almost worked. Dallas had to score late to win the game, 31-27. Don't encourage him. No, but <laughs> – the, the, but my other conclusion in this alternate universe is this. Broncos franchise would have been traumatically affected by losing Super Bowl 26 with John Elway playing in Burgundy and Gold. Um, it's possible that the Broncos don't have a single Super Bowl right now as part of the butterfly effect. Instead, they have three, which is why it was a good thing the Broncos didn't trade John Elway back in 1991. Mm -mm. That is a wrap for today's program. It's Orange Blue Today, presented by Sean Pondo, OBT's BFD, and we appreciate each and every one of you. This is Mace. I'm Cease. Everyone, stay frosty.